Hi, welcome back to the shop. This is part 3 in the build of the single cylinder steam engine from a kit, from a, a kit of castings. First episode we did the castings and uh, machined the, the, base, the base plate, drilled it and in the second episode we machined the A-frame which uh, gives the machine its overall aesthetics and look. And, um, this will bolt onto the base plate like this. On top will go the cylinder with the cylinder head and uh, the valve box. And onto these two machine pads, of course, this machine is a crankshaft, so we need some bearings to support the crankshaft. And I have these, ca oops. I have these castings which are the lower part of the bearing blocks, the pillar blocks, and these are the, um, the bearing caps. These will bolt on top of, of, the, um, of these bearing blocks. And all pieces still have the, the sprue to them. This is the area where the liquid aluminum ran into the sand into the sand mold and uh, form the piece and we'll machine this off. Um, these castings are quite accurate. Um, we might be able to, to hold them in the vise without any special precautions. Um, on this side we have 23.8mm uh, and on this side we have 23.05mm. Uh, 3 hundredths of a millimeter variance between this and this side, so we will be able to hold them in the vise like this and machine off the back side uh, to, to give us a flat surface. And we will turn it around, surface the other side, drill it, tap it and uh, we're good to go. Okay, let's do some old schoolish layout. I don't have a, a height gauge for, uh, for to do layout. I do it the old school way with um, gauge blocks and a scriber. So, what do we want? We want this lower flange to be five, five millimeters uh, thick from the surface. So we measure the overall height. That's. 16.4 millimeters at 5 millimeters then we have 21.4 millimeters that means we need a 20 millimeter and a 1.4 millimeter gauge block we ring them together and now we have our Double check is I always double check gauge block stack ups because it's so easy to mess up uh, and ruin your work. 21.4. So now we can go use a scriber. This is just a piece of high speed steel that has a flat, uh, that is ground like a scrape, uh, a scriber. So the, the cutting edge is flush with the bottom surface. And to do your scribing, you just put it on top of a of the gauge block stack up and now you hold your part and run it along the edges. And this is one of the most precise ways to do layout. Um, a height gauge is really not bad, but this is um, as accurate as your gauge blocks are. And now we have a nice uh, layout line all around the all around the flange down here. Okay, let's do the second one. I brought the camera in a bit closer so you can see what I'm actually doing. And sorry for the bad light over here. I need to add some more lightning to my layout pl layout place. And of course I can't reach under here because the sprue is in the way, but you can see that I have 
a nice layout line all around. Not on this side, I forgot this side. <laughs> Great. Okay. Also, I, I got my layout line all around. Except for the area where the sprue hangs over, of course. But that's uh, that's good enough. Um, same on this part. I have my layout line all around. Layout line almost all around. So we can do some machining now. Okay, back at the milling machine, and I already have uh, some pieces of thin cardstock. This is about 0.25 millimeters thick cardboard. Um, and I bent it over 90 degrees and glued it or taped it to the vice jaws with some uh, painter's tape. And also, I have a matching parallel down here in the vice, and now I can clamp clamp or bearing or pillar block or whatever you will call it into the vise and really get a good clamp at it and and give it a tap it down carefully okay now we can be sure that it's flat um, flat in the vise by when I take the parallel and try to tilt it on one or the other side I can feel if it's if it's loose or tippy on one side and uh, that's not the case I can move it because the surface the upper surface uh, of the sparing block is just filed flat and that's not super precise because it doesn't matter so far um, yeah that's that's okay. Now we can uh, change to a bigger cutter. I think we're going to use a 40 millimeter shell mill and rough away this uh, backside. Okay, I already did the first pass with the shell and shell mill, uh, and it took a took off about four millimeters in one pass, uh, running at 300 RPM. Yes, I know. I could run this at about well, 2000 RPM in aluminum, but uh, I don't bother. I, it's, uh, this is not a race again. heavier cuts like this I don't use the quill for um, adjustment in high die I move the whole head up and down um, I don't want to do heavy cutting with the quill out extended hundreds and hundreds of millimeters even if the quill is very tight fitting in its uh, bore it's still not the best practice in my mind. Um, I try to have the quill always as high up in the housing as possible and especially when I use shell mills, big roughing mills or um, uh, indexable, indexable cutters. Okay, I clamped the both um, bearing blocks directly to the machine's table using three strap clamps and now we're going to surface the the tops uh, the top of the castings um, and we can measure the overall height of these with a depth mic Okay, we have the pillar blocks surfaced on bottom and top surface and now we're going to, ma to machine the bearing caps. 
um, which also have the big sprue on here. But problem with those is they don't have a flat surface on the bottom where you can rest them on a parallel. But they have these two spots where later the bolt holes will be. And I figured out I'll take my box of old gate locks. Really, if you have a machine shop, you should have a box of old gauge blocks that you can use and abuse for setup. Don't use your good gauge blocks for that purpose. Or do it and suffer. And I took a, I, I built two gauge block stacks with 34 millimeters. And I can rest my work piece on those two um, cast uh, on these eyes uh, or these um, locks on the gauge blocks and clamp it in the vise that way and it will be level or at least level enough for a casting and then I can run my shell end mill over it, flip it around clamp it down and surface the top. This small spot here will also be surfaced. And in the vise it will, it will look like this. I have the two gauge block stacks up and my part is suspended between those. It's just resting on those two uh, outer areas. And now I can clamp it down like this. And it will be more than adequate in, uh, in precision to do the machining. Okay, let's machine this down. I didn't use the power feed for this first cut because uh, I was not entirely sure with the long sticking uh, out stick of the sprue if this will work and I will ta also take out the part now and take a measurement. Okay, these small eyes here need to be 3.5 millimeters and I'm one millimeter shy of my final depth adjustment so these should be about 4.5 millimeters and they are uh, 600 over but as this is a this upper surface is raw cast that's uh, good enough yeah I might spot face these surfaces later anyway to give the um, the bolt heads a, a good surface to rest on Okay, we can clamp it back and do our final cut. Make sure that the gauge blocks are clean. I will pull out the vice jaw and make sure that everything is how it should be. Uh, machining a raw casting is always a bit between guessing and hoping. Um, it's completely different from machining a piece from raw stock. Um, no, I'm not going to say billet. Um, machining pieces from raw stock is completely different as you can start with a square block and, and square it all up all around and make it uh, precise as you want. But on the raw casting we have the overall shape and dimension of the piece already given by the casting so you have to judge where to take material and where to leave material on from case to case and yes i'm not using my usual uh, copper drift when i work with aluminum because the copper will dent the um will dent the aluminum and I don't want that. I, I, I don't like the dead blow hammers. I have one, but I don't use it as much. I have the feeling that I can't 
uh, settle down parts that precise as I could with a, a dump hammer, as I call these. This is a just a nylon nylon hammer. It's one of those with the with the split split housing, cast iron split housing, and I think that's one uh, made in Germany. So that's a, a good quality hammer. I like I like that one very much. And for aluminum parts. That's my way to go. Or also when I work with plastics. And now we can also use the power feed because it's it's safe. Looking good. Oops, that was the gauge block. That's the reason why I don't want to use your good gauge blocks for something like that. Um, if you drop your good gauge blocks on the machine's table, you might uh, drop a tear. And as you can see, we have the, the lower surface machined. And also, what to notice on those castings. Um, there are very little um, gas bubbles. A lot of times when you see um, backyard foundry pieces or parts, you see a million little gas, gas uh, bubbles in the aluminum that look like small uh, black spots about uh, one tenth of a millimeter in diameter. And on those castings there is practically none. Um, and that's due to the uh, degassing with argon. Up here on the oil cups there is a little boss. This will later be threaded to a septon small oil cup. And I already surfaced this one and now we will take a light cut on this one too. Um, yeah, that's no heavy machining. That was easy and without pain. So now we have to do all the milling operations on these two parts done and now we can proceed on with the drilling. Okay. Um, next we're going to drill the mounting holes. Next we're going to drill the mounting holes and we're not going to drill the holes for the for the bearing caps because we will drill those together with the caps. We will clamp the pieces together and drill them as one. Um, so everything aligns nicely. But the mounting holes in the base we can drill right now. And I didn't use a parallel, I again used an old gauge block. And I did that with a reason. You can see that the gauge block is smaller than my part or not a, as wide. So, and you can see here the approximate, uh, approximate um, position of the holes. And that when I drill through, I will clear the gauge block. Um, I will not drill into it because the holes are on the outside and the gauge block is in the center. Okay, I spot drilled all the, uh, the, the mounting holes and I used again the spotting drill, but um, normally the spotting drills are very long they have a, a pretty long shank um, and I'm using a small 0 to 6 mm Albrecht chuck on this, um, on this milling machine most of the time because I do mainly small work and you can't choke up a long drill very deep into it so I cut it. I cut it off 
right before the well done flat on the shank and when you compare it to a new uh, spot drill that I didn't cut off you can see that I cut off about uh, 20 millimeters and now I can clamp it up in the, in the drill chuck short and very stiff and uh, yeah when I use the normal drill in the in this chuck you see that it overhangs a whole lot and this is against the purpose of this type of drill. This drill needs to be short and stiff to give a precise position of your hole and uh, when it's reaching out that long it tends to walk around. This is not a problem when you use a big uh, a, a, a a big drill chuck or a collet chuck or a well done uh, um, a well done tool holder or end mill holder or something like that but on a, with a small drill chuck like I use it makes all the difference but I really like this small chuck it doesn't take up much height in C it's very precise and it's uh, just well built it's way better than a lot of other chucks that I have seen. Um, I'm not a big fan of the chucks that use a key. Come on, we have 2015. We have um, we have keyless chucks that work. And yeah, just just use a, a good quality chuck. And when you turn this by hand, this feels just just right. Everything on the Albrecht chuck is perfect. Okay, I changed to a 2.1 millimeter drill and now we can drill those four holes. Okay, I did some work off camera and also I almost messed up one of the bearing blocks. Um, as you can see, the cap is already screwed on to the lower on the lower bearing block. I drilled them, I tapped them with a two mm thread. I screwed in two pieces of all thread, two mm all thread, and used small uh, model engineering size two mm nuts. I almost messed this one up. Um, when I drilled the hole in the lower block to to tap it, or when I drilled it 1.6 millimeter, I broke the drill bit because I was impatient and the drill bit seized up in the material. It broke, and I was pissed. Uh, then I went on. I tried to pick up the broken drill bit with a with a, a scriber that didn't work and. What's always working, drilling from the backside and hammering it out with a small punch. But in doing that, I blew out the casting in this area, in this shiny area here. And then I had to machine out this area, machine a piece of aluminum that fits in there. I tapped it, I screwed it in from the bottom and I didn't take pictures or video of this whole process because I was kind of pissed. But now um, the glue, the, the um, epoxy I used is not 100% hard, but the screw that holds the insert in is um, sufficient to hold this all together. And um, when this hardens, I will clean it up with some, uh, some files, with some Riffler files and with a die grinder just to make it look like a casting again. So don't break the lip block. Don't break drill bits, it's, uh, don't do it. But as you can see, it worked, it's, it's uh, all together now, back together and we can proceed on to work. I already drilled and reamed this one directly in the split line and there will be later a plain, um, a plain br uh, brass bushing in there. And I have the second bearing block where I didn't break a drill bit, already set up in the Y's. It's a pretty simple setup. Um, it's one parallel down here. The machined bottom surface goes against the fixed jaw and this 
little machine spot up here goes against the moving jaw and this bottom surface goes against the parallel and the left side of the casting goes against the stop so there we go and this is almost self-aligning this will be uh, the bore will be square to the bottom surface and that's what matters and I have already my 6mm spotting drill in there and we can go on with drilling spotting on with a 6mm drill Okay, now we have to change to the uh, collet chuck because this, uh, as I mentioned earlier, this um, drill chuck goes only to 6mm. 7.5mm drill. Now we change to a reamer and in 8mm I only have this uh, high helix uh, spiral uh, reamers. I don't like them very much. They are supposed to work very good in soft materials like aluminum but uh, I prefer the, the, um, the low helix uh, spiral reamers. This is a normal spiral fluted reamer and this is one of these high helix uh, reamers. I prefer this style anytime. They don't have that much of a tapered section. These have a, a pretty long tapered section and uh, these produce a cleaner uh, bore in my mind or in my experience at least. And take a lower RPM, uh, 95 RPM. Okay, and we need to counter bore it. Um, the the uh, brass bushings that will go in there have a flange, and we will counter bore this one millimeter deep with a ten millimeter end mill. That's it. Uh, now we can flip these parts around and do the counter bore from the other side and for that we have to align these pieces of course okay um, before i counter bore the other side of the um, bearing blocks i just wanted to see if they align on the base plate and i have a piece of eight millimeter uh, drill rod in there and it turns quite nicely it turns Really, I put the drill rod in and then I tightened down the screws. Of course, I have per uh, bearing block only two screws in right at the moment, but still, oops, uh, but still, it turns quite nicely and should be able to align everything later so it fits. And here again with the A frame on top of the base, and I can see. How this all will get together. Okay, we're going to count the board the back side of the bearing block. The front side is already uh, bored and one set up with the bore, and now we will do the back side. And the the distance be between the two uh, counter bores needs to be 11 millimeters. Um, because this will kind of align the brass bushings in there and hold them in place. And to align the bearing blocks on the second side, I have a piece of 8mm ejector pin that's hardened and ground in an 8mm collet. And I will 
draw that up into the spindle. And I will take my bearing block and just push it over the pin. Now I can bring it down with the quill and move my table over. We'll open up the vise and bring the part carefully down. I don't knock anything up. Okay, there we go. And I clamp the cool in position. Zero out my DRO and clamp the part in position. And of course make sure that the movable jaw is clean over here. Bring it in and clamp it. And now we have aligned the bore true to the spindle and also have our position. So that's a pretty fast way to do it. And it's it's kind of precise. It's about if I would run a DTI in this bore, it would be about one or two hundredths of a millimeter off. The ejector pin is very close fitting in the bore and also it's um, pretty precise. Okay, let's change to a end mill, eight millimeter end mill. And now I go down uh, 0.8 millimeters. Okay, now we can measure the height between the two bores and um, take a second cut. And we fill the uh, digital mic in there. And <laughs> okay, I had to um, to lift the part a bit higher in the vise and realign everything and uh, go over again because I couldn't get <laughs> in there with my mic and the, the lower end of the mic hit the vise before I could take a measurement. So I had to realign everything and now we're good to go. And we have 11 point... 11.12 millimeters and target dimension is 11. So we have um, 0.12 millimeters to go. Let's check if that's uh, parallel. Yeah, pretty much parallel. Uh, didn't expect anything else because um, we aligned it with the pin. So let's move the table back in and take another cut. Okay, that should be the final cut on this counter bore. And just to show you what I was measuring, I was measuring from the inside from the inside of the counter bore to the other side of inside of the counter bore, the bottom surface of the counter bore to each other. And you can do that with the mic. You place your fixed anvil against the step and then looks uh, you can measure this distance and I did I hit the 11 millimeters pretty pretty good yeah uh, it's a bit out of parallel but uh, okay and by this I think the bearing blocks are finished so if you have followed this far thank you for watching and see you next time